All right, guys, so happy Independence Day, 4th of July to you and your families. And I hope that you are having a great time, whether that be at the beach, on a vacation, or at a cookout with your families. I hope you're having a great time and thinking about the founding of this country and all the great patriots that fought for this country and our independence. And I know that 4th of July is about the founding of this country, okay, 1776, fighting the war with Great Britain for our freedom and independence, the founding of this country. But sometimes, you know, I, I do like to think about all the veterans that have fought to maintain our independence and freedom in this country and what that means to me. And this story, unfortunately, we got to talk about a 100-year-old World War II vet by the name of Carl Sperlin uh, DeKale, who was a U.S. Marine that, again, fought for this country during World War II. And he spoke out recently about how he feels about this country. And he actually broke down in tears because he does not feel like this country is the same country that he fought for. And I want to talk about this because um, there's also a story out there about how military recruitment is going down and I want to talk about maybe some of the reasons why we're not seeing people signing up to fight for this country anymore. And I think it kind of has something to do with the same reasons why this Marine is feeling like this country is not the same country that he fought for. So without further ado, let's play this clip. And it is a very heartbreaking clip of this 100-year-old Marine breaking down over the fact that, you know, he feels like this country is not the same country that he fought for. Take a look. I don't know. I've, I've lived a good life. I mean, I've had a, a lot, a lot of happiness, happiness, smiling, telling everybody that everything was beautiful every day. If I went into my church and didn't say everything was beautiful, they'd think I was sick. And, I, and I'm not that way. I mean, I'm a, I, I, I sincerely believe in this old world that everything is beautiful. I mean, if I see, if I wake up in the morning and see these plants out here and, they, and all those flowers that are in there and the green grass on the, on the ground, that's beautiful. And people don't realize what they have. They bitch about it. And then nowadays, I am so upset that the things we did and the things we fought for, and the boys that died for it, it's all gone down the drain. Our country's gone to hell in a handbasket. We haven't got the country we had when I was raised. Not at all. Nobody will have the fun I had. Nobody will have the opportunity I had. It's just not the same. And that's not what our boys, that's not what they died for. I just, it's just, just not it. I'm so sorry. I'll be all right. It just takes me time to get over it. But God, I just, I, I, why, why me? See, sitting here like this, see, all this going on. It's it just, Emily, it's just, just not, it's just not the same. It, that isn't what we fought for. Oh well, I should be worried about it. I guess I'm a hundred years old. They say. I'm a hundred years old. They say. Wow, wow. I mean, that is absolutely. It, it's a very kind of gut wrenching you know, thing to watch because I, I definitely feel his pain, right? And I think what he's trying to say is that, you know, a, a lot of people are complaining and whining about the country that he fought for. And because of that, they're actively trying to destroy the country that he fought for, okay? People don't realize just how good they have it in America. And the reason why we have it so good is because of people like him. It's because of the brave young men and women uh, that have fought for this country, that put their lives on the line, and then they come back home, and, you know, maybe 50, 60 years later, you got people talking about how America is so terrible, America is so bad, you know, everything is messed up, and it's systemically racist, and this, that, and the other, and it's like, bruh, um, 
you live in the best country on earth, right? You live in the greatest country ever. You have the most valuable citizenship ever, okay? Uh, but again, you have people out here that are actively trying to destroy it, right? Regardless of how good it is, because they don't realize how good it is. They've never stepped foot outside of America to see that when you go to some of these other countries, you just don't have it as good, right? It's just not as good as it is in America, and I can definitely see why somebody who fought during World War II would, you know, be upset with the direction of this country and feel like the things that he fought for, um, you know, is, is kind of, you know, kind of going to waste, okay? Um, so, again, that, that is very sad to see, and I, I feel terrible that he feels that way. Uh, but, again, that's part of the reason why I do my channel uh, is because, you know, I don't necessarily like the direction that this country is headed in. And, you know, this is my way of trying to contribute to, you know, reversing course, okay? Uh, because I think more people do need to appreciate veterans like him in the country that they fought for. Um, because this is an amazing country, uh, despite what, you know, a lot of people are saying. And despite the fact that the Democrat Party is actively trying to destroy this country. So, with that being said, unfortunately, um, the military is having trouble recruiting people like this veteran to fight for this country today okay and uh one of the reasons why according to an expert is their woke policies it is wokeness which in my opinion is you know the main factor that is contributing to the destruction of this country so let, let's read about this the u.s military under a biden pentagon has sacrificed meritocracy for wokeness in recent years sending a message that discourages new applicants and worsens the recruiting crisis an expert told the daily caller news foundation Military recruitment in 2022 has plummeted, NBC News reported, leaving the Pentagon scrambling for ways to fill the ranks of U.S. forces, alienation of traditional families who constitute the military's core recruiting market through things like diversity quotas, refusing religious exemptions, and teaching critical race theory at military institutions have all contributed to a growing unwillingness to enlist, according to Center for Military Readiness President Elaine Donnelly. Yeah, so... Um, I believe this 100%, okay? Uh, and the key part here is the alienation of traditional families, right? Because uh, a part of wokeness is trying to destroy the traditional family structure, right? Trying to take down the patriarchy, okay? Uh, men are less important. Men are less valuable. And, you know, you throw in things like diversity quotas and teaching critical race theory, you know, that, oh, white people, evil, blah, blah, blah. America's a terrible place. It's a terrible country. Again, why would you sign up to fight for a country that doesn't necessarily seem to appreciate the people that are fighting for it, okay? I, again, they seem to be more concerned with trying to appeal to uh, people who actually aren't very patriotic, right? Who don't really love America as much as they're trying to appeal to the traditional families who do love this country, okay? And who are proud of our country despite our controversial past okay uh again um they're not doing a good job of you know recruiting the people that have traditionally made up the core of the military the result she said is a loss of prestige and meritocracy in the armed forces quote the culture of the military has been eroded by several years of social engineering and woke policies it's been accelerated by the current administration donnelly who has been studying social issues in the military for over 30 years told the dcn F. Yeah, um, we have woke generals all over the place, okay? Uh, namely, woke general Mark Miley, okay, who wants to understand white rage. They want to understand white rage, okay? White rage, right? That is what he's focusing on, white rage, okay? And then you got his side uh, kick, <laughs> Tweedledum, because Mark Miley is Tweedledee. Uh, general Lord Austin is Tweedledum. Uh, he's also woke as well, too, okay? He's, he's super woke, too. So you got woke generals run into place, okay? Uh, again, why would you want to sign up to serve under these people, okay? Who obviously don't like the people. They hate the people that have, again, made up the core of the military for years. The Biden administration's emphasis on woke ideas sends a poor message that discourages parents and other influencers from supporting careers. The all-volunteer force, according to Donnelly. For example, one of the things Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin did upon assuming office was announce a full stand down to investigate what Donnelly claimed were overhyped instances of extremism in the ranks. 
focusing on ideologies that fall to the far right and ignoring instances of far left and Islamic extremism. Quote, it sends a message that if your son or daughter joins the military, if they're not a certain skin complexion or sex, they might be investigated for extremism, she said. Fact. Fact. Okay. Again, this echoes the same exact thing that we're hearing from the FBI, the uh, Department of Justice, that the biggest threat to this country is white supremacy, right? Not Islamic extremism. Okay, not the far left woke revolutionary extremists, not those guys, not Antifa, okay, <laughs> not drug dealers, cartels, none of that stuff. White supremacy, right? White supremacy is the biggest domestic th terror threat to this country, according to uh, the people running this country right now. Again, ridiculous, ridiculous. A highly competitive employment arena, decrease in the population of individuals eligible to serve, and a general disconnect between the Army and broader U.S., Public have all contributed to the Army's recruitment struggle. Army Public uh, Affairs Officer Major Charles M. Spears told the Daily Caller National Foundation, propensity to serve a measure of whether an individual indicates an interest in military service, according to the Military Leadership Diversity Commission, hit 9%, the lowest since 2007, Spears said. Donnelly compared the Biden Pentagon to Disney, who lost financial privileges in Florida, partially because of its gay agenda and produced a LGBT promoting film that flopped in the box office, according to the Washington Times. Quote, they alienated their constituency, Donnelly explained. When you see the U.S. military make the same mistakes and losing their audience, it becomes a matter of national security. Facts. <laughs> That's true. It is a matter of national security. Because again, you cannot come out here and openly alienate the people that make up who you are marketing towards, right? The, the main core of your audience. And this is why these companies that come out here and bash white people, I don't get it, right? White people are still the majority of this country. Um, You need them, right, in order to be a successful business, okay? You need them in order to have people, enough people in the military, right? I'm just saying, I, I really don't get it. The Pentagon attributed a poor recruiting environment to a, quote, disconnected and disinterested youth market that is unfamiliar with military service, resulting in an over-reliance of military stereotypes, Major uh, Charlie Dietz, a Department of Defense spokesperson told the DCNF. The Army announced a plan to, in March, temporarily reduce the size of the active duty force from 485,000 soldiers in fiscal year 2021 down to 473,000 by 2023 for quality considerations, Army Undersecretary uh, Gabe Camarello said in a press briefing. Quote, we made the decision to just temporarily reduce in strength as opposed to lowering our standards, said Camarillo. Well, I mean, you've already kind of lowered standards, particularly to try to get, you know, more women to join the military. OK, uh, so don't sit and talk about you not lowering standards. You are kind of lowering standards a little bit. OK, uh, however, recruitment standards have changed. The Army dropped the high school diploma or GD uh, equivalent requirement for new recruits in June, according to a statement and relaxed tattoo guidelines, task and purpose reported. Donnelly predicted the recruiting environment would get worse under the Biden administration, especially as up to 60,000 troops are up for discharge for refusal to take the COVID-19 vaccine, according to the Washington Post. What effects will these individuals have on recruiting? She asked, quote, the military belongs to everybody and is there to defend the entire country, not to enforce political agendas or to teach exotic ideas that cannot be defended by science, Donnelly said. Facts. Facts. The specter of a strengthened military comes as the U.S. faces a growing threat from China and seeks to bolster overseas deployments as a deterrent to Russia aggression. Quote, it's not the end of the all-volunteer force, but it's going into a very dark place now, said Donnelly. Facts, I 100% believe it. I 100% believe it because like that 100-year-old veteran said at the beginning of this video, this country is not the same country that he fought for. It's not the same country, okay? It's not the country that he fought for, and it's a shame the direction that we're headed in. Um, and I think you're seeing a lot of people who potentially want to join the military choosing not to join the military because of some of the same things that I think this vet is upset about in regards to the direction of this country. It's just not what it used to be. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.